alam mo ba kung bakit ganyan yung bitmoji natin ngayon? Kasi basic. <laughs> basic. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to our day 2 for statistics and probability. So we are going to tackle basic terms in statistics. Now, this is still under chapter 1 exploring data under lesson 2. Our objectives to hit for this lesson are identify quant qualitative and quantitative variables and discrete and continuous variables that are quantitative, appreciate the importance of classifying the given variables and then Classify the given variables. Now, for our table of contents, we're going to tackle four basic terms in statistics. Data, universe, variable, sample, and population. Let's hit the first one, which is data. What is data? In singular form, data is datum. And then in plural form, you have data. So data are facts and figures that are presented, collected, and analyzed. Data are either numeric or non-numeric and must be contextualized. Now, given the following below, can this group be considered as data? You have here the number 3, you have red, F, 157, 4, 65. Can this be considered as data? Now, although this group is composed of numbers and symbols that could be classified as numeric or non-numeric, in group natin yung mga number na 3, 1, 5, 6, 4, 65 to numeric, and then you have your, your red, F, um, M, blue to non-numeric, this group could not be classified as data. This is because although it's composed of numbers and symbols, the collection has no meaning and or it is not contextualized. Hence, it cannot, it cannot be referred as data. So how do we determine if what we're given with as a group is the data? To be considered as data, these six questions should be answered. You have here, who provided data? What are the information from the respondents? When was the data collected? Where was the data collected? Why was the data collected? And how was the data collected? Keeping in mind that your collected data also must be contextualized and have meaning. Let's move on to the second term, which is universe. So what makes up the universe? In statistics, universe is the collection of respondents, not the whole Milky Way universe, okay? In statistics, universe is the collection of respondents from whom one obtains the data. It is the collection or set of units or entities from whom we got the data from. With the data collection activity, our universe is humans. However, take note that there are studies where the observations are taken from plants, from animals, or even from non-living things like buildings, vehicles, farms, etc. On the other hand, the information asked from the respondents are referred to as the variables of the study. So in the data collection activity, there are 12 variables. Okay, next, third term, we have here variable. What are the classifications of a variable? Now, variable is a characteristic that is observable or measurable in every unit of the universe. Usually, a variable takes several values, but occasionally, a variable can only assume one value. If the variable can only assume one value, it is what we call a constant. For instance, we have here an example, universe, humans. Our variables are age, height, weight, number of siblings. Now, these variables are observable in every unit of the universe, which is humans. How about if we're given the universe 15-year-old humans? Our age now becomes a constant. So our variable for age 15, which is described under the universe 15-year-old humans, is now what we call a constant. Variables can be broad, broadly classified as either qualitative or quantitative, with the latter further described into discrete and continuous types. Okay? So let's go to the first one, which is qualitative. From the word quality, Qualitative variables are referred to as categorical variables, so categories. These variables answer the question, what kind? 
Okay? So you have here an example, sex, hair color, religion, marital status, residence. Okay? Although there can be numeric codes for these examples. For example, for sex, we can assume variable 1 to be male, variable 2 to be female. 1 for male, 2 for female. However, there can be a sense of ordering in qualitative data. Income group can be qualified into high, middle, and low income status. However, data on sex or religion do not have a sense of ordering. So yung ibang qualitative data pala, pwede mo silang ilagyan ng sense of ordering. Pero yung ibang qualitative data wala. For example, sex and religion. Sex or religion do not have a sense of ordering as there is no such thing as a weaker or stronger sex and a better or worse religion. Okay? Second one, we have quantitative variables under the word quantity. These are referred to as numerical variables. These variables answer the question of how much or how many. Our examples here are height, weight, number of registered cars, household size, income of respondents. So, ilan. Your quantitative variables can be divided into two types, discrete or continuous. Discrete quantitative variables are data that can be counted. While continuous, quantitative variables are data that can be measured. Examples for discrete quantitative variables are number of days for cell phones to fail, patients in a hospital. For continuous quantitative variables, you have volume of alcohol, height, and weight. So why don't you try? I have here a table. We have here the first column being variable, the second one being the type of variable, and then the third column being the type of quantitative variable. For example, you have your identification number. Now we know that is under qualitative. So we write in the second column, qualitative. For the third column, it's qualitative. So why do we need to write the type of quantitative variable? So leave it blank. Next, for sex. Sex is qualitative. You cannot count or measure sex. So you write there qualitative. Next, number of siblings. Now, we know that you can count number of siblings. So the type of variable for that is quantitative. Now, type of quantitative variable. Now, that can be discrete or continuous. We wrote there discrete because wala naman tayong number of siblings that can be measured by 1.5 or 2.7. So a general rule of thumb, pag discrete ka, pwede mong i-count by full numbers. Pag continuous, you can have measurements na 1.7, 2.6, 2 and a half, and so on. So you can try this on your module. You have there the continuation of the table. Now let's move on to the last basic term in statistics, which is sample and population. Population, this is the set of all possible values of a variable. For example, what are the possible values for the sex of a respondent? If our universe is humans, what are the possible values for the sex of a respondent? It can only be male or female. Now, male and female can be referred to as the set for the variable sex. Okay? How about in a greater scale? For example, in the whole universe of Quezon City Science High School students, the grade 11 students is a subgroup. Now, this subgroup is what we call a sample. What is a sample? A sample is a subgroup of a universe or, a, or of a population. To visualize this further, I have created here a mini infographic about universe, population, and sample. So a universe is the whole collection of units from which the data were gathered. The population is under the universe, which is the set of all possible values of a variable. Next, you have the smaller one, which is the sample. It is a subgroup of a universe or of a population. For example, our universe is Quezon City Science High School students. Our population can be grade 11 students. Our sample can be grade 11 Einstein students or grade 11 Darwin students or grade 11 Curie students. Right? In a study, there is only one universe. Okay? but could have several populations or several samples. So that is it for our lesson two. Now, how basic was that? That's basic terms in statistics. Thank you.